How does a mid-size gold and silver mining company manage to lose $160 million in one quarter alone? And is this shocking number something to really be concerned about? Or if we take a look under the hood, is it really not as bad as it seems when you first read the headline? Today we're going to talk about Fortuna Silver, what went on with the company in the fourth quarter, what caused this massive loss number to occur, and most importantly, should we be concerned as we head into the remainder of 2023, or maybe, just maybe, do we have reason to be optimistic? <music> I am not sponsored or paid by Fortuna Silver in any way, but I do own a significant, to me, number of shares in the company. That's why I follow them. That's why I occasionally have Jorge Ganoza join me here in the basement. He's the CEO of Fortuna. I am sponsored by First Mining Gold, which is another stock that I own a significant number of shares in. I'd encourage you to check that company out. They have two of the largest development projects in Canada right now, both of which have over 5 million ounces of reserves. I'll run a little commercial for them later in the video, but let's switch back to Fortuna and what at first seems to be startling information that came out regarding their fourth quarter performance. Look, it's real simple what caused this massive loss in the fourth quarter. It was impairment charges on one of their mines in Africa and one in Argentina in a very small amount regarding their mine in Mexico. They wrote down the value. When they write down the value, that is a non cash event, meaning it didn't cost them any money. It's not like the company actually lost $160 million of cash. No, actually, and I want to point this out because I think this is key. If you dig into the management discussion and analysis document, which almost nobody does, you'll find that cash flow from operations, the cash generated by the company during the year of 2022 was over $200 million and was significantly higher than the cash generated from operations in 2021. So from a cash perspective, this company is doing very well. And hey, look, I don't like to brag to you guys or talk about my background a lot, but I have a degree in accounting. I worked for one of the fancy big four accounting firms. I understand finance and how accounting works. At the end of the day, cash is king. And the fact that Fortuna is generating significant cash from operations is a good thing. First Mining Gold is a development company advancing two of the largest gold projects in Canada. Spring Pole in Ontario and Du Parquet, located in Quebec, each already has 5 million ounces of gold reserves, but exploration initiatives are underway at both projects to find even more gold. First Mining is well-financed, has zero debt, and owns an interest in four additional Canadian gold development projects. Because no matter how you slice it or dice it, fancy up or fancy down, temporarily, numbers with accounting tricks and gimmicks, at the end of the day, it always comes back to cash and cash flow. And when we look at Fortuna, they actually dumbed down their numbers, made some very conservative mark-to-market type moves with their balance sheet. They are generating significant cash. Let me remind you of something. They've been building a new mine, the Seguela mine in Africa over the last year, and they've basically been able to finance that with cash flow. Not to mention the fact that over the last year, they even bought back some of their own stock with cash flow. So while temporarily this write down may be a little startling for some who don't understand how the accounting system works, trust me, in the future, they will reap 
big, big benefits from the fact that they are a healthy cash flowing company. Now, of course, the metals prices have to cooperate, which they seem to be doing lately, and the company needs to deliver on the new mine and deliver with their other existing projects. But Fortuna has a history of doing that. And there's always a chance, I'll emphasize chance, that they could write those assets back up. And that would create some big imaginary gain number in the future. You gotta look at cash flow, guys. Now, another thing I wanna bring up is they're having great exploration success around their new mine, which will be up and running here in the coming months, the Seguela mine in West Africa. They have the Sunbird Prospect where they have had some outstanding drilling success. The way I understand it, they've not even incorporated that into their reserves, right? So that's not even showing on the balance sheet. So while they wrote down some of their assets, they have other things, it just what I see, I could be wrong, kind of sitting over to the side like this big new Sunbird deposit that they haven't even added to their balance sheet yet. So what do you see? When you look out one year from now with Fortuna Silver, things are looking good in Mexico. Things are looking good in Peru. Things are looking good in Argentina. And we have a new mine coming on in West Africa where they're actually having great exploration success. I mean, Things look very optimistic for the company. Now, they need to deliver, like I said earlier, and a higher metals price would just add even more fuel to the fire in regards to the profits that Fortuna could be raking in in a, just a few short months. Hey, I just wanted to share my update, what I see going on with the company. Yes, the headline number, it shocked me as well, right? I thought there might be some impairment charges, but it's important to remember, guys, cash is king. Cash flow is king. And when you look at cash flow at Fortuna, it looks good. When you look at the quality of the management, it looks good. When you look at the future of the company, it looks good as well. I appreciate you joining me. I hope you enjoy your time here in the basement. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, right? Your ideas, your input matters. You don't have to agree with me. And I always love to hear from you. Until next time, be well.